Hello again. This is Math uh, 1120 coming to you from the College of DuPage, and the title of this lecture is Confidence Intervals, ripped from today's headlines. Today, the Washington Post published a Washington Post ABC News poll among 725 likely voters. And you'll remember that the statistics tell you you really don't have to talk to too many voters to um, come up with a confidence interval. And uh, the error of this analysis was plus or minus four percentage points. That means that's the margin of error. Now, they didn't tell the uh, readership what was the percent confidence uh, level because most of the uh, readership would not understand that, but you do, right? Anyway, here was what happened then. They were surveying likely voters nationally, and the question posed was, if the presidential election were held today, for whom will you vote or lean to? Now, it's important that you realize that the election is not being held today, and so it might be different three weeks from now. And just to make this not a political uh, statement, I uh, blacked out a few things here. And uh, you can go read the Washington Post if you want to read the article. Uh, but anyway, uh, they did a confidence interval analysis. And don't read anything into the colors either. But the red candidate team uh, had a point estimate of 54%. And there's the margin of error. Now that means you're between 50% and 58%. And the blue candidate slate, again, don't read anything into the colors, uh, was 42%, and that means it could be as high as 46 and could be as low as 38. Now, um, this doesn't add up to 100%, and so they left out things that uh, were other um, uh, responses or no opinions, or, you know, they wanted to say, oh, I'm going to vote for someone else. Um, so anyway, these are the results, and because these confidence intervals don't overlap, they're saying, oh, it's pretty clear that this top slate uh, is way ahead. But that's not always the case. There was a very famous example that shows our own Chicago Tribune uh, that was published and distributed in, uh, out on the streets showing that Dewey defeated Truman, and this is the victorious President Truman gleefully uh, holding up that uh, that newspaper. Uh, there's a three-minute video that does a really nice job talking about this, and this is the hot link for that uh, if you're interested. It's uh, well done, and this is a, a St. Louis Living uh, video that's uh, referenced here. We've had even a more recent uh, situation. Newsweek magazine, uh, they realized they should write and have formatted two results. But this is the one based on the polls that they distributed and printed 125,000 copies of. And then they sent out uh, something saying, whoops, we need to print and send out these instead of these. Um, there were 17 of these sold because some people put them out prematurely. But you see, polls, again, were wrong. Now, Mark Twain famously says, statistics don't lie, but liars use statistics. Actually, some argue it wasn't Mark Twain, but we'll say it was anyway for now. Um, it is true. Statistics don't lie. They mean what they mean. And you guys know what they mean. That means if you have a 95% confidence interval, you're going to be wrong 5% of the time. So, perhaps... The individual folks who were sampled lied. Perhaps these questions could have been poorly posed. Perhaps the timing of the polls was off. They stopped polling two weeks before the Truman election. Things changed in two weeks. Or the wrong people were asked. That might mean the sample was poorly drawn. The earlier decisions through data video that I talked about talked about the Landon versus Roosevelt thing where the uh, publication sampled rich voters instead of poor voters. A lot of poor voters voted for Roosevelt. Or it could just be that when I say the wrong people were asked, that's a sampling error. 
you're going to be wrong 5% of the time, even if you do everything right. Uh, there's also some nuggets of wisdom that are included in the St. Louis video. I'm going to point to them here. Uh, I think it is better to focus on the issues rather than the horse race. But this day and age, even the statements must be fact-checked. And so, um, it's hard work, but important work, to be an educated voter these days. Another thing that was in the video is uh, the journalist says it, when you're on, lot, on air um, or online, I guess, it's safer to focus on what not to say than what uh, to say. Probably some good advice there. Closing. Now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. May God bless you all.